I'm Jill Riley. You're listening to the Currents Morning Show. I have a special guest with me today. Police drummer and composer Stuart Copeland is coming to Minneapolis for an event on Sunday, May 8th. The Vocal Essence Chorus Ensemble Singers and Orchestra and uh, some other really special guests will be performing a new composition by Stuart Copeland. It's called Satan's Fall. Now, this is happening at Central Lutheran Church in Minneapolis. And uh, Stuart's going to be at the event. Um, I, I know you're going you're gonna to speak before the concert. And yeah, I want to talk about that upcoming event. Uh, but uh, hey, before we do, just a, a hello and uh, welcome to the Twin Cities Airwaves. Well, hello, Twin Cities, both cities. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'm happy to have you on the air with me here. Um, I think some congratulations are in order. First, uh, I saw that you uh, that you won a Grammy uh, for Best New Age Album. So congratulations yeah. on another Grammy. Well, thank you. My favorite part about this Grammy is that the, uh, the category is New Age. Now, I know, I'm pretty sure, I haven't done the research, but I'm pretty sure that no rock drummer in history has ever won the New Age category. How cool is that? All right. Well, so I can tick that box at last. All right. You have the distinction. Um, you know, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, about that album that you made, Divine Tides. Now, that was a collaboration with another composer. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. Well, yeah, I I'd met this guy, Ricky Kedge, uh, years ago. He is a friend of the planet and he does good deeds. And I'd collaborated with him on a track for some humanitarian uh, mission that he was on. Uh, then more recently, he sent me, he was making an album, and he sent me these tracks, these elements of tracks um, of extremely exotic stuff, um, Indian singing, um, you know, all, all kinds of elements from all over the world, very traditional, but the way he mixed them together was really not traditional. And he's an amazing musician, um, and he's sending me the stuff, and I'm completely inspired I'm miking up my my crotales, my timpani, my whatchamacallits, and all my cool inanimate objects upon which I love to aggress. Um, mm -hmm. Just banging stuff, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was really a rewarding experience. He's very spiritual. I'm kind of a drummer in a rock band, you know, a uh, fancy composer as well. But, um, but I got kind of infected by the general wholesomeness of his attitude towards the planet and, more importantly for me, his music. Um, so we had a very good report and we made this record, which turned out to be pretty gosh darn cool. Um, I uh, suggested that, hey, you know, you're going for this Grammy with the new age. Why don't you go with uh, the world music thing? He said, oh, no, 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 that's a cutthroat world. You know, dog eat dog world. In the, uh, I didn't the know that. Yeah. Well, it turns out new age is also a cutthroat world. It's that it's hard fought and all the other, you know, once you get nominated, all the other content, this is the same in every category, but I thought that was for like album of the year, but way down the list, uh, you know, album notes, Grammy, these are all extremely hard fought. I'm talking with Stuart Copeland. We we're just talking about the, uh, the Grammy for best new age album. And uh, that record is called Divine Tides. Um, well, Stuart, one more thing that I want to hit on, you know, before we talk about, um, you know, your life really more of in, in the composer world and, and you know, music scoring world um, in the rock and roll world, which uh, you are you're very familiar with uh, being a drummer in the rock and roll world. Um, I thought that you um, had such a nice tribute to Taylor Hawkins and Rolling Stone. Um, and I wonder if um, if you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Taylor Hawkins, you know, the current we're alternative and indie and rock. We play a little bit of everything here on the current. Um, but, you know, I, I understand that you guys had a had a great friendship. So I'm, I'm really sorry, you know, for your loss. Yeah, we did. He is a very um, effusive guy, very effervescent personality, very cheerful, very upbeat. He's a fan, a super fan. And I tried to explain, dude, dude. You are yourself a rock star, okay? You know, show a little disrespect. Um, <laughs> but he's in that that strata, that bandwidth of people who are 16 when I was in my glory days. Um, you know, Foo Fighters, Rage Against the Machine. Uh, I got a call from, um, you know, Jack White the other day, who I thought is just the coolest of the cool 
but he came to my show. My God, you know, to be respected by the young is a big deal. But they, so they, you know, humans are like ducks. You know, the first warm thing a duck sees when a little baby duck comes out of its egg, the first warm thing it sees is mama. And for uh, adolescent humans, the first bit of rage rebellion that they see when they hit puberty, that's daddy. And so for Rage Against the Machine, Tool, Primus, and that kind of age bandwidth of bands, I'm like a beetle or something, you know, which is preposterous because I know how when I am in the presence, the august presence, the divine presence of Ringo Starr, I know who's boss. He's boss. <laughs> and I suppose in uh, show business, we have a hierarchy, uh, which makes it easier for us all to interact. You know, we're like dogs, we know where we are in the hierarchy. We can relax whether you're at the top or bottom. And um, those who, it's chronological. Those who went before are boss. Those who came after are, you are their boss. And it just makes it easy for us all to get along. And, but I try and tell Taylor, dude, you are a major artist. You know, they insisted on opening for us at, at Giant Stadium in LA. They are a stadium act. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dude, get your own stadium. But they, <laughs> they're, they're fans. They're, they, in spite of being extremely substantial artists themselves, particularly Taylor, he is fundamentally a fan. Yeah, I liked you use this expression, um, brother of the stick. And, and I love that because for, for any, you know, friends I had growing up that played drums and like you're kind of talking about, have that admiration for those that come before, um, that there is kind of something special with drummers uh, because there are so many, you know, different techniques and styles and uniqueness that I, I just feel like there's there's an admiration drummer to drummer that I see more than like guitar player to guitar player or bass player oh, yeah. to bass player or whatever it is. That there guitar is a special players bond. Are all at e guitar players are all at each other's throats. Um, and it's very strange that on my, you know, my top 10 chuckle buddies, um, drummers and bass players, you know, mostly bass players, bass players and drummers have this bond. Uh, you know, the, the, the bass player kind of translates the music for the drummer. And when the keyboard player and the guitarist are all talking like F sharp minor, you know, the drummer and the singer wonder what the hell they're talking about <laughs> uh, at opposite ends of the jet, you know, in the middle, they're talking, they F sharp minor. They're talking about you or me, you know, uh, and the bass player, he knows about F sharp. He's not so sure about the minor part, but at least he can help with the F sharp. Yeah, I um, yeah, I just th there is something to you know the rhythm section, and um, and and maybe that's it too. That because you're not out front, you know, maybe yes, that's part that's of it right. too. Yeah, we are at the back of the bus, the back of the stage, but in the front of the groove. Exactly. I'm talking with Stuart Copeland, uh, the drummer from the Police, also a uh, 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 composer. Now, you know, if if you're a fan of the police and you've got your favorite songs of the police, uh, you know that Stuart Copeland is drummer of the police. But I mean, you've had a pretty incredible career as a composer, you know, scoring films. And and I wonder, um, you know, what was sort of your gateway into that world? Like, how did you how did you get into, you know, doing music for films or, you know, composing, you know, getting into more of a almost the classical world? Well, I'd always had a torrent of music flooding through my head, mostly orchestral music, because my mama raised me on Stravinsky and Ravel. My dad raised me on jazz, wrong jazz, big band jazz, uh, but that didn't take. Uh, the orchestral music did, 20th century, not classical music, 20th century orchestral music, uh, which I've always found very exciting, until when I hit puberty, the first rock rage rebellion I saw was Jimi Hendrix, and that's it for, for all that. So... It was kind of schizo. So, so that's been going on. So the film business began with a phone call, an incoming call from Francis Ford Coppola. Um, and he just wanted to talk concept uh, of this film he was making. And so he flew me over to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where they were rehearsing with Matt and Dylan and Diane Lane and the rest of them. Um, and we got talking. We got into the, the concept and we bonded. And he threw, he just took a chance. I uh, said, OK, do it. And I immediately set to work. I had no idea how you're supposed to do it, which is kind of what he liked about it. Um, totally non-traditional approach. I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but and he told me it's got to be happy here, sad there, and a million gradations and uh, varieties of human emotion as well. 
And that was the mission. Okay, happy. Uh, plonky, plonky, plonky. Oh, that's happy. Um, and I just kind of made it up, which made it kind of revolutionary because I didn't know any better. I'm talking with Stuart Copeland and uh, Stuart Copeland is going to be in town uh, not too far away, you know, in the uh, near future, Sunday, May 8th, for an event with Vocal Essence, Vocal Essence Chorus Ensemble, Singers and Orchestra. They're going to be performing this new composition by Stuart Copeland, and it's called Satan's Fall. Um, It's going to be at Central Lutheran Church in Minneapolis. Now, let's talk a little bit about that new composition. Um, Let's talk about Satan. Yes, let's talk about God and Satan and Adam and Eve. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, you know, I read in the description, you know, um, you were inspired or it's based on Paradise Lost, which I'm, I'm, of course, of pop culture growing up in the Catholic Church. I'm aware of what it is and what the story is. I certainly haven't sat down with the 10 to 12 books or whatever it is. But I wonder what was it about Paradise Lost that gave you inspiration because i mean this inspiration has come up in music and arts and i guess what what was it for you well exactly the same experience that you had uh they rammed it down my throat in high school uh english literature a level in england it's a major english um literary giant um and so they teach it to you and it makes no sense at all it is a huge epic poem about about uh, adam and eve and they you know they they lose paradise that's why it's called paradise lost but there's a story within this enormous epic story which is the story of satan and it's a it's they the archangel uh gabriel comes out and explains to adam and eve guys there's a problem up in heaven uh there's this guy called satan keep an eye out for him um and so as he tells the story, he explains why it is this great mystery. How can the almighty creator of all things have an adversary? What's up with Satan? What's his problem? Come on. What, you know, why, why did he, he's up there in heaven and why did he pick a fight with the big guy? This is that story. So in the story, um, I mean, for, for the composition that you've made Satan's fall. And um, I, guess, I guess my story is like, what actually is you know like satan's character i mean can is it like a protagonist is it still antagonist well it's interesting that you ask because in you know the the the, this story has inspired a lot of art a lot of visual art dore and blake and others have and uh, have have illustrated these epic celestial literally events and uh i think it was blake who said that actually uh milton was in the camp of Satan without knowing it. And the reason it appears that way is because Satan is very colorful. His arguments are logical, complex, multi-layered. God is one-dimensional, because I said so. Mm -hmm. And at first that may seem, that may diminish God, because he's so simplistic. But in fact, I think the point that unknown, you know, un- misunderstood by Blake, but I think Milton was trying to make the point that good is good, white is white, black is what black. There's no shilly, shilly shallying gradations are the work of Satan. And, uh, you know, monolithic good is monolithically good without further explanation. And, you know, the, the instigating moment is when God looks around to all of his angels gathered around him and he says, I've got me a son. Um, and he is now boss of everyone and everything under me. And this is where Satan became jealous. Um, and God makes no explanation. He just says, because I said so. And um, it's Satan that has arguments and slippery, slithery, you know, uh, uh, he, has, he, has, he gets all the best lines, of course. And his character is much more interesting. Now, in this yeah. case, the Messiah... Uh, and I did this years ago before it became everyone started doing it. I figured, why not have a soprano play the Messiah? Because I thought that would be interesting and thought provoking. Now it's common as muck that we go cross gender and everything. You know, it's great. But, you know, so it's, it's, it, I was revolutionary when I wrote, first wrote this piece, uh, I don't know, five or 10 years ago. Um, but it it, it kind of makes you think. And, and, and that's that's what I think the purpose of all art is, is to make you think a little, it's to beguile, to entertain, to lighten up and to, you know, all that, but a little bit of thought isn't bad. 
the event is coming up with Vocal Essence. Uh, they're going to be performing Stuart Copeland's composition, Satan's Fall, Central Lutheran Church in Minneapolis, Sunday, May 8th. And uh, and Stuart, I know that uh, you're coming to town. You're coming to the Twin Cities to, to be there. Well, yeah, this is the best part about being a composer. You know, when I'm banging drums, I got to come and chop wood for two hours, physically in exertion, which I'm going to be doing with Oysterhead in a couple of weeks over in Atlanta at a festival. Um, banging stuff. But the composer gig is very nice. I get to watch this huge choir and the vocal essence of Minneapolis is world famous. Uh, it is a huge, powerful onslaught of vocal power. It is an enormous musical uh, instrument, if you like. Uh, and so I get to go and watch other people work. And it, I, you know, I write it here in my studio and it's all very, very personal, but it goes, the piece goes out of the world. Next week, it's playing at Pepperdine University. You know, it's played and in, in, it opened in Pittsburgh. And, you know, the, I create the piece and then it has a life and a career of its own. It goes and it's, you know, Satan's Fall is on tour. I'm sitting at home, except I'm coming out to Minneapolis because your uh, choir in your city is particularly huge. And I, I, I don't want to miss that show. But I get to I get to sit back there and watch everybody else work and bring this creation to life. Yeah. And uh, as a composer, it's uh, it's going to be pretty incredible to see it all to see it all unfold. Yeah. You know, I don't have to bang anything. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you choose to while you're sitting in your seat. Um, but but I know that um, you're going to be speaking at that event, too. And I wonder um you know, do you kind of uh, you set up the concept and, and talk about the piece um, yeah. for the audience? Yeah, just sort of explaining, you know, what it's all about. A little bit of background doesn't hurt. Um, I think that, I, I, I hope there are surtitles where you can see the words as they go by, but even, even not so. I mean, people are big fans of opera, including me, uh, when they don't understand a word. It's about the music. Um, but if you do understand the words and you have got the words, it's an incredible literary masterpiece that is the foundation of all this. But the music is kind of cool. I've been talking with police drummer and composer Stuart Copeland. You can check out the Vocal Essence website. Very easy to Google. You'll find information about this performance of Satan's Fall at Central Lutheran Church in Minneapolis. Stuart Copeland, I uh, hope you enjoy your time in Minneapolis. And thank I look you. forward to it. Yeah. Thank you for checking in with the with the current. Well, thank you for listening.